Did you put something in my water for me to be like being very honest right now? <laughs> now you're at Vanguard. How was your first year there? Ooh, we're getting to the good questions now. First year was rough. Didn't stay there after my freshman year. The athlete does so much research on the school that they're gonna go to. And they sign and they make this commitment to right. the team. I don't believe the coaches truly do the same. Like you're signing 17 year olds. The frontal lobe is not, yeah. is not formed. Where did you pivot from that first year? I ended up playing at Long Beach City College for two years. I ended up having to redshirt. And what was the biggest difference between like your mindset at Vanguard compared to your two years at Long Beach? My brain was kind of maturing a little bit and was like, this is not a game, like this is your life. It was rough and that was a big issue. I didn't mesh well with a lot of my teammates. I ended up getting in a fight with one of them. Imagine every day you're going to a practice where someone is calling you the B word or making up rumors about you and like horrible, horrible things. During all this time, where does freestyling come in? Someone reached out to me from Bola. They reached out to me. They were playing in the Nike Strike Night, which was a 3v3 tournament. We did stuff with the German national team. We did stuff I with Neymar. Yeah, I wasn't born, you know, maybe the most talented player, the most athletic or whatever, but I'll look people dead in the eyes and be like, I'm gonna outlast you. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the uh, Without a Doubt podcast. Um, I'm Rafael Espinoza. I have my co-host here. Hi, guys. Sergio Gutierrez. I've um, been here a couple of times, but good to be back. <laughs> Dude, too long, but good to see you, man. And <laughs> we have a, uh, a guest on the pod. Haley. Haley. Uh, how would you... Um, Describe yourself to somebody who just who doesn't know you. Well, um, I'm an athlete and soccer player through yeah. and through. Um, I've been playing 25 years, so long, long time. Mm -hmm. Probably longer than you've been alive. You okay. said, what did you say? 25, 25 years? years? Yep. I'm 23. Oof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. So, I mean, athlete through and through. Um, I guess, yeah, I've been playing. I mean, in terms of what I do, I obviously play soccer. I do a little bit of freestyle, um, which probably- You say a little like... bit, you're downplaying, <laughs> for sure downplaying. Compared to like a lot of my friends, I feel uh -huh. like, who are like professional, I, I, I just, okay. dab I dabble, you know, they're, mm -hmm. I let them be that, them and- And she's talking about rapping, she's a freestyle yeah, rapper. Yeah, you know, on the side, <laughs> it's, it's my side hustle. Um, no, yeah, so I do that. Honestly, I always say just like, I pretty much do everything with the ball at my feet. So whatever it is, whether it's like playing or it's more creative, more of an art form. Obviously I model, do commercials and stuff like that, but it's a lot of it is just geared around the game and the ball. So yeah. Sick. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, like uh, we were kind of talking a little bit off the pot. Mm -hmm. We're here to gonna get your story and gonna be asked the question of like who is Haley and what's her story. Mm -hmm. um, so let's just start from the from the beginning. When so you said you Started, started 25 years ago. Um, started 25 years ago. What was that? You, were you on a team straight away? You come from a soccer family? What was that? Yeah, actually, um, I actually don't talk about this often, but mm. I did not really come from a soccer family. Mm. Um, my dad played, my biological father played, mm -hmm. kind of got me into it, and then he kind of like dipped out of the picture. Okay. Um, but at that point, I had already fallen in love with the game. Mm -hmm. um, it was just super natural for me. It's something I just, I love doing. Um, so I just stuck with it. It's pretty much been the only sport, you know, that I played. But um, yeah, so I started when I was four, your, your typical, you know, your mm -hmm. little rec team or whatever. And yeah, I just, I just really took to it. And then I stayed playing rec for a couple years. And then um, it was a little bit different back in the day as well. Like you weren't getting like five-year-olds on club teams, you know? Mm. So I played rec until it was, you know, time for me to go to club, which was like early middle school. And then I- Sorry, I'm sorry to get you off. Where, where was this? Where were you born and raised? Born and raised in Long Beach. Long Beach, yeah. Right? Cali. So yeah, California. Um, yeah, love Long mm. Beach. Yeah, nice. been in and out for a big part of my life. So yeah, I okay. was kind of find my way back there. Yeah. All right, <laughs> so. and then you joined your first club team what way? I joined my first club team, I was in middle school. I want to say like seventh grade or something like that. Okay. I think around sixth, seventh grade. So mm. yeah, kind of later in today's standards. But yeah, back how, then was- like 12? No. Yeah, I was, 12, I was no. yeah, I was like 11-ish, 12-ish, <clears throat> somewhere around there. Yeah. So, but kind of back then it was just kind of normal. Yeah. So yeah, so I did that and um, yeah, I was with the same club for a long time and- mm. 
Um, I don't know how long you want what, me to keep going with this answer. <laughs> 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 what, 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 what club team was it? Got 20 more years to go. But <laughs> <laughs> so it's a club team, team that does not even exist anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, Gold Coast Extreme. So we played in the CSL. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So um, they're they're kind of like an OG club. Yeah. Like I also played in the Huntington, like Midway City area. So I didn't play club in Long Beach. I played a lot of my rec in Long Beach. And then kind of during that time, I transitioned over to like more Orange County. And then that's when I joined um, Gold Coast. Okay. Um, yeah. And what position did you grow up playing? So I started out as um, in club, I guess. So like my first like, this is your position was actually the six. Oh, nice. Yeah, which always surprises people because I'm kind of oh. like yeah. small and scrawny. <laughs> um, so yeah, I always I played the six for a long time, defensive mid, and then um, then I played the eight, was more of a floater in the middle. Then I played the ten, and then as I kept getting older, they just like shoved me higher, yeah, up, yeah, <laughs> higher yeah. at the top. So um, yeah, I always say my last my last year of college kind of ruined me because they played me at the nine and just hate defending now, you know? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, Okay, so then you're at Gold Coast Extreme, and so how old are you by, by then? You're... By then, I mean, I played from, that was my that was my only club team I played on. Oh, okay. Okay. Only club team, yeah. So, so before so, college, you were there then? Yeah, so like I said, like, just the times were so different than it is yeah. now. Um, yeah, loyalty was a thing then, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I also right. was really fortunate yeah. to, like, I didn't play on the highest level club team, but I had a really amazing coach and I played with girls who worked really hard. So, um, yeah, the coach was the biggest reason I stayed at the club is a really mm -hmm. long time, um, family friend, um, still very close with him. And he pretty much shaped me as an athlete and to be honest, really as a coach and trainer now. Mm -hmm. So I was, like I said, times were different, but I was really fortunate to have it work out that way. So what played was, with them for like five years, I think. Oh my god! Oh nice. Yeah. What was the league structure like then? Like I know now, there's so many league, different leagues and stuff. So simple. Yeah. It was super simple. Now there's like six, seven different levels within yeah. club. Then it was just you had your bronze, silver, and you know gold, gold yeah. or whatever. So Gold Coast Extreme was there gold. Was it that? was yeah. I mean, we moved up, so <laughs> we were bronze, and then we just moved up as you know uh -huh. as we got older, and just we there's a core of us that really you know, stuck together for a long time. So, um, yeah, we just moved up and that was it. And now it's just, now it's different. Now, most of those, I would, I'd say most of those teams within that league, they don't even exist anymore. Wow, that's actually so, yeah. I know slammers like absorbed a lot of them. I know mm -hmm. slammers, you know, this was a couple of years after I left club, but I know slammers ended up absorbing, you know, Gold Coast Extreme and, you know, some of the huge mm -hmm. other clubs absorbed all the smaller ones. So I know Slammer's women's side is like huge. Like they're Classic. like, um, they get, they get a lot of talent there. And then I, I know a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of like the D1 girls that I've ever spoken to, they were like, oh, I come from Slammer's. I played at Slammer's at some yeah. point. So yeah. Most of the girls yeah. I train are Slammer's. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So yeah, that not so much for the boys though. We're so, they such on a grow it i was because i was at yeah. slammers yeah and i like, coached at slammers on the boys side actually so you um do? huh you do or you did? i did oh nice i did so um when i started training and coaching this is more of a sidebar but i was actually all did only boys oh. um and then it kind of shifted during covid but yeah oh nice so okay yeah, well we'll get more into that fast. yeah um <laughs> did you play high school soccer or no i did yeah what, so what i went to calvary chapel costa mesa um, and we played in the league kind of just against the Costa Mesa teams, Costa mm -hmm. Mesa high schools. Um, but yeah, we were, we were really strong. We were a private school, but we we're small, but mighty and always did really well. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, I had a really good, a really good high school experience. We always made CIF and yeah, we did well. So okay. it wasn't too, anything too exciting, but yeah. And then, and during that time was, uh, was it always the idea? Like I want to, after high school is continue playing or what was the thought process then? Mm -hmm. No, um, no, I actually didn't think I was good enough to play. Again, oh. kind of going back to what you first asked me, like if I grew up in a soccer family, like I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about anything. I wasn't connected to anybody. We didn't have a whole lot of money for like extra training or doing this camp or, or whatever. Um, and we didn't, we didn't know anybody. Like mm -hmm. we didn't know anyone to kind of, you know, nav help us navigate, you know, so I always, you know, I always say I'm, I'm 
younger-ish, but I grew up super old school. Like I played because I loved it and I always worked mm -hmm. super hard. Um, but yeah, I also had a confidence is issue. I'd say like I always was one of the better ones on my team, but I also, it kind of felt like it was like the deep end. I didn't know anything about it, you know? Right. So it kind of just felt like intangible at the time. So yeah, I was just going to graduate. I wasn't even planning on going to college. Um, I was just going to start working. I, you know, I've always kind of wanted to just work and make money and whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I wasn't going to play soccer. It wasn't really a thing. Um, but my club coach at the time, the same one, he um, he knew was very good friends with the coach at I don't want, know if they're friends, but very connected. <laughs> I don't want to say they were besties. Um, no, I don't know. Um, but there, he was very connected with um, the coach from Vanguard. Mm. So um, super random. My club coach, his name is Randy. They're they're both their names are Randy. Okay. Uh. <laughs> um, so. My club coach, he was like, Hey, you should go to the ID camp in the summer. And I was like, eh, like, I don't really want to go. Um, and he's like, it's just go. Like, there's two spots left, you and my teammate at the time. Mm. You and her name was Danny. You and Danny can go. Like, it'll just be fun. Like, no big deal. Just go. I was like, fine. Like, I'll go, whatever. <laughs> um, and so I ended up going. I want to say there was like maybe, again, it was during the summer too. So I had already graduated, mm -hmm. um, no plans of college or anything like that. So I ended up going and, um, yeah, I think I want to say there's like 30, 40 ish girls that went and there was one spot left on the team and they offered it to me right then. Oh, and there. really? So was this, yeah. was this an invite only trial or was this an open trial? I'm not really sure. I don't know. I just showed up. Didn't okay. know anything about it. So you didn't have to pay for anything. So no, I just huh. show, I just showed up. Okay, so, so you're so, basically going into it. Did you know there was one spot left? No, I, I didn't know anything. Yeah. I just showed up and put my <laughs> put my cleats on. I, yeah. I had no idea. I'd, I'm like, I didn't even, I knew what Vanguard was, um, like the school, just because it was down the street from my high school. And mm. I went to a private school, Vanguard's private. So we heard, a, like, I heard a lot about it. But again, I wasn't researching colleges. I, I had no idea. So I was like. I actually said in high school, there's no way in heck I would go to Vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't say that. God will, God will teach you a lesson, you know? <laughs> um, so that's the only thing I knew. I just knew that it was a private school in Costa Mesa. And I'm, uh -huh. I'd gone to a private school in Costa Mesa. And that was so that it. So, yeah. So I just went because I was told to go pretty so much. And was it a one-day trial? Yeah, it was just one day. And, and then after, what, what was the conversation like? Um, one of the coaches pulled me aside. Um, and he was like, hey, like we, I don't remember, it was so long ago, but basically like we really, we like, you know, what we saw. Word and for word. So yeah, yeah, word. yeah, I mean, <laughs> paraphrasing, we liked, you know, what you did out there. And um, yeah, um, they're like, we have one spot left and we want to offer it to you. And so basically I had to, like, it was two, I want to say it was two or three weeks. I want to say two weeks before, um, captain's training. Mm. So I had to make a decision and obviously I said yes. And then, yeah, two weeks later I moved in and started training with the team. Oh, what what so. made you say yes at that time? Cause you said you weren't really like planning on it. You said you I mean, I think the fact that it was an opportunity to keep playing, you know, at the time, like I said, I didn't think I would get any opportunity. Um, I kind of lacked like confidence. So I think just having that opportunity like present itself, like, Hey, maybe I am good enough to play. Did you have any like, real idea of like the difference between NCAA and NAIA? Cause I know, I mean, I know Vanguard's now gonna be NCAA, yeah. right? D2? D2. But they were NAIA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Did you know the difference between the two? Did you even care about that or? No? Yeah, I think I knew the difference. I didn't really care. Yeah. Um, Cause again, I probably would have played, I don't know, I probably would have played Juco if I yeah. had the opportunity or if, if that was presented to me, you know, right. I just wanted to keep playing. So it wasn't really so much like, oh, I have this, you know, goal I want to reach with it. It was more just like, well, whoa, a four year, you know, wants me, sure, I'll go. So, um, but I did know the difference because I had friends playing that were, you know, going to Long Beach State, Fullerton, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Oh, so, okay. yeah. So I'm curious because now it seems like, I mean, soccer is your life, mm -hmm. it seems like. And from that, from being in high school, was that wasn't the case? 
It was the case. Yeah. 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 It was definitely my life. Um, I played as much as I could um, all the time. I would like, <laughs> I would do obviously like my team trainings and everything like that. Um, high school club. And then um, there was a place, it's not around anymore, but it's in, um, it was in Huntington Beach and it was an indoor facility. Yeah. And I had never played indoor. I didn't play it really growing up. Again, not really a soccer family. I just, mm -hmm. you know, did what I needed to do. But um, I don't even remember how I got invited to play. Somehow I got invited. It was this really small indoor facility, a two small field. I think we played like four before on each one, like very small. And um, yeah, I played there once or twice and I was horrible at it because indoor is so different, you know, yeah. than, than, you know, the regular field. Um, I was really bad, but I had a lot of fun and um, I just wanted to go back. So literally like probably three to four times a week, I would go and play like four or five hours there. Oh, wow. So I was playing all the time, yeah. but I was having a great time, yeah. <laughs> which is super fun, you know? So, and, and, and that place ended up changing, I feel like me as a player um, and probably the trajectory of my playing career for sure. If that Vanguard opportunity didn't present it itself, do you think you would have just continued playing just rec like recreationally or do you think you would have stopped completely? I could not even tell you. Okay. I really, I was 17 when I graduated high school. I had no um, idea what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was still kind of this way, but I've always been a person that, like, I just figure it out when, when I get there type person. Go, yeah. I don't have these, you know, huge plans. I just, whatever gets presented, then I'll kind of cross that bridge when I get there. So, yeah. couldn't tell you. Couldn't yeah. tell you what was going through my head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, so now you're at Vanguard. Mm -hmm. um, how was your first year there? <laughs> Oh, we're getting to the good questions now. Um, first year was rough. Yeah. First year was rough. Um, it was really hard for me to talk about um, my, I guess, experience there for a long time. But now since I'm an old person, um, <laughs> it's a little bit more. Um, I, I kind of love my story now. I've uh -huh. really grown to love it a lot because um, it's very unique. But yeah, I had a, a not so pleasant time there at right. all. Really not great experience there um, for a lot of different reasons. Were you there for four years? No. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. No. So I have a very confusing <clears throat> college journey. Okay. But my freshman, I started there my freshman year. That was the first school I went to. And um, yeah, I just, I was super young going in the program. Um, there were girls who had been there all four years and I want to say there's probably like nine of the starters were like seniors mm. they had been playing together since high school it's kind of one of those things right my coach at Vanguard coached in high school so mm. it was a really tough program to come into yeah we also when you were talking about the difference you know did you know the difference between NAI and NCAA mind you we were always ranked like top three mm. in the nation we weren't just like this little, you know, whatever NAI school in the, you know, in the right. middle of the South or something. Like we were, we we were a good team, right. a great team. Yeah. Um, and so I came into a very competitive team that was very um, connected well with each other, had great chemistry already. I was a good player, but again, I was super young, you know. So mm. that was kind of like the start of me losing a lot of my confidence again in playing and then because of that it just a lot of other things kind of came out of alignment I'd say um, and so unfortunately um, didn't stay there after mm. my my freshman year um, I decided you know I think it's best if I leave mm -hmm. and two again this is another like kind of weird part I think people don't really understand if you walk through it but I had gone to a private school my whole life again in Costa Mesa. Mm -hmm. So I went right down the street on Fairview to Costa Mesa to a private school. So it was very much like a very similar thing. And I feel like as well, I went a little stir crazy and then we have all these rules at the time I didn't appreciate them, you know? Um, so yeah, because of that, it kind of, things kind of fell apart there for sure. Yeah. yeah. So then I had basically, I had a, you know, a decision to make, like, am I going to stick it out? and kind of figure out how I can make it work for myself or am I gonna 
you know, take a step back or I wouldn't say a step back, but pivot right. and figure something else out. Yeah. I, 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 that makes a lot of sense as to why, like, it sounds like, uh, as you were describing it, it sounds like such a whole, not, not, I don't know how to put this, like something not looking like you would look forward to at least like knowing that, like how close the group already is and it doesn't, and how far back they go. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious though, like mm -hmm. why, well, before, like, why did the coach want you? What did he, what did he say? Like, you just like, oh, I, I like how you play, but did he not consider like how well you would like blend or mix in with the, with the team or? I mean, do coaches really think about that? I mean, I, mean, I, I feel would. like. I mean, now as a coach, I would. Now as a I coach, would. you would, yeah. but I mean, um, I mean, no. no, I didn't know anything about the program. They didn't really know anything about me. Um, I think, you know, I don't know if there was a separate conversation because like I said, my club coach and my mm -hmm. college coach knew each other. I have no idea yeah. what happened behind the scenes. Um, but I mean, I, the conversation I had also was not with the head coach. It was with the assistant coach at the time mm -hmm. as well. So that's why I'm like, I, I don't know. I couldn't answer that. Yeah. Yeah, because at least, yeah, because, like, that's a big thing. I mean, you because uh, uh, I coach now. Yeah. I have my team. And the biggest thing is trying to establish, like, a culture. And a big thing is um, the players I bring in is really seeing, like, yeah, they're a good player, sure. But how well can they blend in with a group of guys I already have? Sure. And do they have the same kind of morals, same, same, like, you know, that kind of a a aspect to it. Yeah. That, to me, is, like, a big... Um, a big uh, point that I try to keep in mind when recruiting players. Yeah. And I know like from my experience going to UCI, that was our head coach mm -hmm. is like one of his biggest thing as well. Yeah. Um, is it, did he, was he like accurate with all of them? Nah, maybe probably not. I mean, I doubt you yeah. ever can be, yeah. but um, yeah, I was just curious as if, if there was ever that attempt or ever that conversation with the coach scene that you probably didn't, feel like you were blending in as well yeah. or being brought in as we had conversations but like I said like um you know looking back in hindsight um again it was 12 years ago yeah which is crazy to think about yeah um it was 12 years ago um I didn't make the best decisions I had conversations with the coaches um what I will say um, is that what was really difficult was to level with anybody at the time. Mm. It was difficult because everyone was so well connected for so long right. that when I'm coming forward and saying something or I'm trying to have this conversation, it was never really, I don't believe in my best interest. It really felt like I was trying to defend myself or like right. more in survival mode than it was in like, hey, let's like, let's come up with a solution that's going to work for everybody. Right. And really that experience, what my college experience in general, that is just one fourth of my college experience, mm. like this moment right here. Right. Um, but that one year I was there, my, my first year, it shaped really who I am as a trainer and as a coach now. Mm. Um, and so I 1000% agree with what you're saying. And actually I was saying I was on another podcast and that's, we talked a lot about that mm -hmm. was, um, was college soccer, especially on the women's side and the culture. Mm. So I agree. Like I'm yeah. very much like, um, I believe that like, you know, the athlete does so much, um, research on the school that they're going to go to and they sign and they make this commitment to right. the team. Right. Um, and the coaches should do the same. The co I don't believe the coaches truly do the same. Right. They always think, and, and, and I see where they come from as well. Like they have to do what's best for the program or what's best for the reputation or mm -hmm. what's best for how can we win more games. Right. But at the same time, I believe when an athlete makes that commitment to the team, the coach and the program need to make that commitment to the player mm -hmm. because they're not like you're signing 17 year olds. Yeah. You're signing 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. 
like they might be legal, but they, they the frontal lobe is not yeah. is not formed. <clears throat> and so I think there's a huge lack, not just in my experience. And it wasn't all bad either. Mm. You know, I'm just talking about, you know, some of the mm. more sensitive areas. But, um, you know, I think in, in women's soccer in general, because I can't speak for the men's, that that's a that that it has been a big issue in the mm. past. Um, and I think there needs to be a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say nurturing because I, I'm not trying to say like babying, right. but really nurturing into bringing someone into the culture. Maybe who's an outlier, you know, maybe someone who doesn't necessarily fit, maybe someone with a different background, maybe someone with a different personality, mm -hmm. you know, but I think that's a really beautiful thing about a roster is that like everyone with their different personalities, their different skill sets, their different strengths make up a roster that is so beautiful and I think can be successful. Some people just need a little bit of more work than others. I I definitely, I mean, you know me. Mm -hmm. I when I was younger, I needed a lot of work. Like I still need work, but when I was younger, I really needed a lot of work. And, you know, I really wish someone would have come alongside of me and been like, hey, like, we love your your attitude and your spunk and your you know, your fire, but how can we channel this into a more, you know, productive outcome or, or how can we, you know, bring about a better energy with, with all that you can provide. So that's a huge thing into, to what I do. And that's why I stick to more private training now, as opposed mm. to, um, you know, team training is because I see, you know, different personalities and it's really fun to kind of be like, Hey, instead of maybe saying this or instead of doing yeah. this, keep that fire, keep what you have, but let's kind of pivot it into yeah. a way that makes you a great teammate. Right. You know. So where did you pivot? Where did you pivot from that first year? Yeah. So I went from Vanguard and I actually went to Long Beach City College. So oh, okay. I don't know. How did that come I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, how did that happen? Uh -huh. I don't know. I have no idea how that happened. Um, I remember I got a call um, one day and they were like, hey, um, are you playing? I, we, we want you on our team. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Again, I just kind of went so for that. that. That after that first year, you were just like, you were done? Or what was the mindset? You're done and you're not gonna go to another college? You're gonna transfer? And no, transfer I wanted, okay. So I had a decision to make after my, um, after my freshman year. Mm. And, um, because you're my friend, I'll go into a little more detail. I actually, and it was 12 years ago, so I could talk about it. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm sorry, mom. Um, I actually told my mom I'm never coming back home. Oh. So I was still, I was just turned 18 and I said, I'm never coming back home. Like I'm done. I was like, y'all, I was on the deep end. Like mm. my soccer went down the drain. My grades were kind of going down the drain, like with not making great choices and um, was butting heads with my family, of course, because that's, that's what you do. Mm. Um, so yeah, I had, to, I, had <laughs> I had gone to my house and took all my stuff out, you know, when they weren't there. And I said, I'm never coming back home. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was my, that was spring semester of my freshman year. And I said, I'm not, you know, I need to figure it out myself. Like, I'm not coming back home. I'll make it, you know, happen, whatever. Um, but by the grace of God and my parents, my mom, um, begging me and some other reinforcements, I ended up coming back home mm. at that time, they were moving to long beach. And so all of this whole, you know, long beach scenario kind of unfolded at the same time where they reached out to me. My family just w so happened to be moving down the street from right. LBCC. So, um, you know, I was kind of working through things with my family, having this, you know, I had this big conversation with my mom and we just, we we really said like, I got to figure it out. I have a decision to make. I can keep going down this path that I had been forging for myself. Um, or I can like get back into shape, literally, like not just physically, physical shape, but you know, mm -hmm. get my life back in order um, and get my head back on straight, you know, and, and continue pursuing something that I really wanted. Mm. And I really had a big decision to make. And this was a really pivotal moment for me in my life. This was the pivotal moment for me in my life. The mm. number one, that conversation, that decision I made. Because in that conversation, I didn't have to think about it. I said, I need to get my, yeah. my crap Together. back in order. Yeah. yeah. 
together. So I ended up saying yes. Um, I ended up playing at Long Beach City College for two years. I ended up having to redshirt. I was short one unit, so it was great. Um, mm -hmm. Found out on our first game day. Oh no. It's okay. Um, so I played there for two years and I worked my butt off like no one's business. I took you know extra courses. I took courses in the winter, in the summer. I did not know I did not know what a break was. Um, mm. I was training um, with obviously my women's team, but in the springtime, I actually trained with the men's team. Um, I didn't even train with the, I think I did train with the women, but I trained with, trained with the women and the men's team. So mm. back to back, I'd go straight there to, I was doing private, that's when I started private training when I was like 17, 18. I would go straight from there to, um, to go play indoor. Nice. So yeah. my whole life was just getting my life back on track, back in order. Um, for those two years. And what was the biggest difference between like the, well, what just your mindset at Vanguard, your first year there compared to your two years at uh, Long Beach? It was definitely seeing how my decisions, like especially off the field or out of school, like affected me so much, mm. you know? So during that time too, I just, I knew I needed to figure it out. Mm. Like I knew, like it kind of was like this, my brain was kind of maturing a little bit and was like, this is not a game. Like, this is your life. It's like a little and bit so, of an epiphany, like, okay. For sure, yeah. yeah. Something kind of just clicked in and I locked in. You know, I stopped making a lot of my bad choices I was making and um, locked in. And to be honest, even Long Beach was a really rough experience for different reasons too. Yeah. It wasn't an easy experience at all. At all. Like, that had its own Can you give gnarly one, challenges. One example. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Specific I would, details. Did you put something in my water for me to be like being very honest right now? Um, no, I actually, I was, again, I still had my, I don't want to say attitude. It wasn't like a bad attitude or like a chip on my shoulder, but I was very like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like More cautious maybe after that? No, de definitely not. Definitely not. I was, I've always been a fighter, like in terms oh. of like, you know, like defending myself or like being more assertive. Um, so yeah, I didn't get really get along with all of my teammates because they were mad that someone came in from a four year and mm. was probably threatening their spot. And you know, you know what right. athletes and women can sometimes do. Um, <laughs> You can take that out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so um, no, so it was it was rough, and that was a big issue. Was was I didn't mesh well with a lot of my teammates, mm. um, and yeah, it caused it definitely caused some issues, and I ended up I ended up getting in a fight with one of them, like in with Roll one of my clip. teammates. <laughs> no, legi legitimately, we got in like a straight up like fight, fist fight in the parking lot. Oh, wow. And not even in practice. Uh-huh. Oh, no, practice. no, no. This was this was not even after practice. This just, it kind of kind of all unfolded like kind of strange. But yeah, then we found ourselves in, in the parking lot. And um, yeah, we were... Um, you don't, if you don't want it, you have No, to. it really, it, it wasn't even like one thing. It was, you know, imagine every day you're going to a practice where someone is calling you the B word or calling mm. you and mother effer or making up rumors about you and like horrible, horrible things. This was an every single day thing. Mm. Um, I don't, again, I don't know her motivation. I would just try to be nice to her. It was kind of almost like the weird, like front of me thing. Like right. I would, I didn't want drama. Like I'm going to be nice to you, you know, but she was, I would find out all the stuff that she was saying, you know, by my, behind my back or even to my face or whatever it was. So that being said, it, kind of just all boiled over one day. And um, yeah, we were, <laughs> we were in the parking lot. And yeah, we got down and I, she ended up, she ended up breaking my nose. Oh. So yeah, she like punched me in my face and my nose like went to the other side of my face. And um, yeah, I didn't know cause it was, she like punched me first. And so then we kind of like got down for a bit and then some like lady ran by and I was like, I'm gonna call the police. Um, and then so we all kind of like disbanded, you know, and then I went straight into the bathroom and I actually put my nose back in place myself. And oh. then, yeah, I had to have surgery and all that fun stuff. So, so you lost.
You know, <laughs> if if she didn't break my nose, I feel like it'd be even. You know. <laughs> oh, I definitely got the short end of the yeah. stick on that one for yeah. sure. But you know. Uh. All right, well, That's I appreciate you sharing that story with us, to be honest. That's a great little, little clickbait. No, I, have never, I have never shared that story before. Um, to be so. honest, though, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's expected in Long Beach, no? <laughs> it's a, you know what, it's funny, but it's not funny because yeah. it, it's, it, that's another reason it, it wasn't rainbows and butterflies there. Yeah. My mentality was locked in for sure. Right. For sure. No one was breaking me like mentally. Right. Um, but there was a lot of things that came with going to a JUCO in Long Beach. Yeah. That mentality there was really gnarly. And I always say this, and I, I always say this in the, the best way possible, is that there's so much wasted talent that went through that school mm. during those years. Mm. I ended up getting a full ride to play D1 after those years. I worked my butt off, and that was the dream, and that was the goal, and I got there. There was other girls in the program. There's other guys in the program that were equally, if not more talented than me. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's just they got into? I think it's just the culture. Yeah. Culture, for sure. The school's different now. Like I'll go back for alumni games and stuff like that. And oh, I try yeah. to stay a little bit connected and it's different. It's way different now. I think there's a lot more support. It was kind of mm -hmm. like the Wild West at the time though. Um, it was to jump from JUCO to you know, especially in LA County, mm -hmm. um, it just, it was a whole different ball game, you know? And so I, even the girl I got down with, an incredible player, you know, there's a lot of really great players on that team. And especially, like I say, on the men's, the men's side is some of the best players I've ever seen play to this day. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of drugs, you know, on right. both sides, there's a lot of drinking on, on both sides of the program. Um, you know, people showing up to practice high, hungover, um, not showing up at all. Yeah. So, you know, like, I think it was just more of a cultural thing at that yeah. time. Um, that was really, it, it was very unfortunate. I had a taste of what it was to be at a four year. They never did. Mm. And I think that was a huge reason for me kind of locking it in and being like, I don't want to just be where I was at. I want to be beyond right. that, you know, and unfortunately for them, um, they just yeah. never got out. Well, yeah. you mentioned it a little bit. What, so you ended up signing it for a D1. Mm -hmm. what, uh, where at? I went to the University of Idaho. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was your last year? No. Oh, okay. So you had like unlimited eligibility? <laughs> <laughs> so, no. So my freshman year, that was my first, at Vanguard was my, my first year of eligibility. Mm -hmm. I went to LBCC after that. I redshirted a year. Right. It was my second year. So now we're in my junior year. Oh, okay, okay. At University of Idaho, and I was only there one year. Oh, again? How come? Yep. Um, also, different reasons. I actually really, I really loved the school. It was really hard for me as a Californian to go to <laughs> to go to Idaho. Not only Idaho, but Northern Idaho. Mm. The climate was different. The people were different. Um, the playing style. I think that was one of the hardest things. Was so different. What was it? Very kickball? Yeah, mm -hmm. kickball. Tall, strong kickball, that's it. And like, obviously, you know, California is just so different yeah. in how we play. Um, yeah, so there's there's a couple things, I don't wanna say like that happened, but it just, I never really found like my rhythm there, like my groove. I actually had a good friend, at the, we became good friends, but she went to Cyprus actually, and that was a, um, or I'm sorry, not Cyprus, Cerritos. That was our rival really at, when I was at LBCC. I did not know her, but we ended mm. up going to the same you know, school. And what helped her out a lot is she went a semester early. So she kind of got all that like under right. her belt, like kind of, you know, fine tuned some things, um, playing style, like all that stuff kind of dialed in, even just chemistry with the team going into season. For me, I didn't. So I came in like as a junior transfer, which is kind of odd, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I just really never found my groove. The girls were great though. I had a lot of really, you know, some really good times there. And um, the schooling was great. Academics were great. Um, it was a really pretty campus. But, you know, when I was waking up at like 4.30 and had to scrape my windshields getting to, yeah. you know, to lift at 5 a.m., I'm like, this that, is great. That's the time you guys were lifting at 5 a.m.? Mm-hmm. Why? 
What? You know, I don't know. That's a great question. But, you know, it teaches you character, you know? Yeah. It teaches you character. I have a lot of character now. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, um, yeah, I learned a lot of great lessons there. Mm-hmm. And um, saw, was like, saw what it was like to play D1. Um, but, yeah, I don't even think any girls from that team are playing still, you know, like I've just really outlasted them all. (laughs) Um, Quickly, what did you study? Um, I got my AA in marketing. And then um, when I graduated, I graduated with a public relations degree. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So So then what happens after your junior year then? So I was limited on where I can transfer. So I was hitting up, I knew I wanted to come back to California. That was my biggest thing. I can either go D1. So much for loyalty, huh? You, went from- you know, <laughs> I really overcompensated, you know. I really went from, like, yeah. the full yeah. the full swing. Um, but, yeah, so I was limited on where I can transfer. Um, it had to either be NAIA or D1. I guess it's not, like, too limited, but, mm-hmm. you know, but I couldn't just go anywhere my right. heart desired. Um <laughs> Could have done, you know, D2 and really done the whole plethora of yeah. the whole, yeah. been yeah. like the all. Thanos of uh, <laughs> college suck. College suck. Yeah. at all the rings. But um, yeah, so I ended up, that's, I'll give you the short version. I went back to Vanguard. Away. Oh, it's a curveball. Yeah. Whoa. I went back to Vanguard. Away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy. Um, well, hmm. Basically, um, I knew I wanted to come back home. And again, I knew I could really only do D1 or NAIA. So I hit up, I had hit up a few, um, schools, right? I kind of hit up Fullerton, um, like Cal State Fullerton. I had hit up, um, actually Westmont was one that I hit up because mm. again, being like, Coming from Vanguard, which is a really good NAI school, I'm like, I was not going to play at one of the lower level NAIs. Like, mm. so Westmont was always a program I really respected. So I hit up Westmont, I hit up Cal State Fullerton, I hit up a couple different like random schools like that, and wasn't really hearing anything. Um, I would hear stuff back, but nothing. I don't, I don't know. I never like pursued them, I guess. Mm. Um, and then I don't know. I, you know, obviously my faith being a huge part of who I am. I just felt like God put it on my heart to, to reach out to Vanguard. And mm. I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Same coach there? Same coach there. Oh, no. So, um, yeah, I hit up same coach, different assistant coaches. Okay. So I hit up the assistant coach, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, and she like got back to me in the spring or yeah, in the springtime. And then she kind of like ghosted me for a bit. And at this point in time, it was so late in the game. Like, they were kind of, like, my only hope. Like, my only option, really. So I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, you know, I'm like, this. maybe I just won't get to play, you know, my last my last year. Or, you know, still try to play at Idaho. But I really wasn't happy there. Mm. Um, you know, it's just so crazy. So I was, like, completely ghosted. And I would, like, hit her up every now and again. And then she finally got back to me. And then we kind of correspond a little bit and then again, ghosted. And then I hit up, that's when I directly hit up um, Randy, which was mm-hmm. the, still the coach at the time, Dodge. And um, <laughs> I hit him up and I, you know, told him, you know, I'd like to come back. And um, I don't think he got back for me for like maybe a day or something like that. And mm-hmm. I get a text that says, Meet me in the office tomorrow at 4 p.m. That's it. Yeah. And if you know Dodge, like he's very like means business. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, um, and I was scared because we didn't have a great relationship, you know, yeah. when I left. Um, but anyway, so I ended up meeting him the next day and we talked about, you know, a bunch of stuff. And it was a long meeting we had, but it was, it was, it was a great meeting. And I think it was a, provided a lot of closure but also it allowed us to kind of have a fresh start moving forward yeah and um to this day it was the best move best move i ever made it ended up being the best season 
Um, you know, we were still ranked. We still, we actually, crazy enough, we went to nationals my freshman year and went to quarterfinals. That was the furthest we had ever been. My senior year, we did the same exact thing, went to nationals quarterfinals. So there's the only two times we've ever been that far in, in oh, nationals. Wow. And, um, but it was funny because it was five years, right? Because I redshirted. <laughs> So I was playing with like people's like little sisters, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> like, my teammates, and then I got to play with their sisters. But um, yeah, so it was that's how it happened. Wow! So it was like a full circle oh, moment. And but so a much better experience your last year than such a good than, experience, yeah. such a good experience. So I think me and Dodge ended up having a lot of respect for yeah. each other. You know, we didn't really know each other well when I was mm. super young, but I think even me coming back, I think he respected me for that, you know? Right. And then I think because of that, him bringing me back into the program and saying, hey, let's just get after it. I have a ton of respect for him. I always have, and, and I always will. So yeah, yeah. Oh, very solid. grateful. So during all this time, where does freestyling come in? That comes in my, right after college. Okay, perfect. All of that stuff kind of my college is like kind of behind me now. And then uh -huh. now it's like, you know, what the heck am I doing now? Um, and so I played, um, I still played. So I was playing in the UWS, which was a, still a very great league for women's soccer. Um, and that would be considered States. like what semi-pro it's, it was the, the top of semi-pro. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be like UWS, WPSL, UPSL, mm -hmm. but, UWS at that time was was it so I was really fortunate to be on a really great team um, coming out of out of college I played with them for two seasons but during that time um, you were asking about freestyle kind of before freestyle though was when I got really into street soccer mm. so um, I would show up and play again found myself in Long Beach you know playing a lot of pick up street soccer and stuff like that. And um, someone reached out to me from um, this, I guess it's called an organization, a team at the time um, called Bola. Mm. And um, they reached out to me, they were playing in the Nike Strike Night, which was a 3v3 tournament in LA. And they really needed another woman. You know, I know it was crazy. Were you there? I saw this. What? I was there. Were you there? <laughs> Dude. It's so crazy. Playing against Namor. Oh. Right, that one? No, not that one. That oh, was man, that no, came no, no, no. after. Oh, you were sorry, there sorry. though, and I was the one Neymar there. one. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I also I was the one that megged Neymar. <laughs> and, uh, stop. Nah. Stop. No, I was in. I was at Slammers, oh, so okay. I was still in club soccer. Oh. And then, um, so of course, I did my research before coming, and and, um, <laughs> and I saw that you that you played against them, and I was mm -hmm. like, well, no way, I was there. Yeah. Like I was there with like with my brother and um, a bunch of yeah. my teammates. It was packed. It, it was, was packed. completely packed that I got to see Neymar walk by me, yes. and that was it. I yeah. didn't get to actually watch you play or anything. Like yeah, that. but I, that's insane. Though. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. No, no, that's okay. So um, yeah. So Nike Strike Night was like the the first event I really ever did with this, you know, with this team, and um, I didn't know anything about them. I didn't, I knew nothing. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. I just remember being super nervous because I'd never done a tournament or anything like this. Um, but I did it and I did, you know, I did well. I don't think we ended up winning or anything, but, but mm -hmm. we did well. I did well. So they just kept asking me to, you know, come out and, and play with them. And um, they were a team made up of uh, everyone was had their different specialties. It was um, street soccer, people who were like were, you know, specialized in street soccer, uh, Pana, freestyle. Everyone mm -hmm. was so different. So it was this whole other side of soccer that I got to get to know, like mm -hmm. see and understand. Um, but so I played with them for a long time and they were a huge, huge, huge part of how I kind of got started in all of the stuff that I do now. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it always kind of goes back to street soccer really before freestyle. You know but that, it's, you know, yeah. everyone kind of knows each other. It's a small world too. That's so cool because we, uh, I grew up playing free, uh, freestyle. I grew up, <laughs> not at all actually, I'm yeah. a terrible freestyler. I grew up playing street soccer. That's mm -hmm. how my brother and I grew up playing. Oh, okay. um, uh, the apartments that we grew up in, yeah. it was just street soccer. So we're actually going to, um, our goal for this year is to host mm -hmm. a street soccer tournament in Costa Mesa. Uh, 
So you're gonna be probably a special guest in here. Oh, awesome. there we go. Yeah. Well, I'll be there. Uh, yeah, dude. No, but yeah, we're awesome. in, it's in the works. It's in the works. We're, we're talking awesome. with uh, with a place that very cool might allow us to use their facilities. So it, it should be um, should be cool. But no, yeah, yeah um, that's dope. So mm-hmm. what what in, what intrigued you about street soccer? What made you go like I'm not like from 11 v 11 to street? I don't know. Again, I just love yeah. the game. It was it was a different. It was so different than anything I had, you know, played before. And I think what really intrigues me about, you know, small sided and street is that, you know, the more that I immersed myself in the game, again, I didn't grow up in a a soccer family. Mm -hmm. I didn't really grow up even watching soccer. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was really, I guess, discovering all this stuff a little bit later in my, you know, in my career, Um, in my young 20s, really early or late teens, young 20s. And um, again, it was just so different. And I think, you know, in other countries, it's it's reversed, right? Yeah. They grew up playing street soccer, small-sided. They don't even touch the full field. They won't even touch grass, mm-hmm. you know, for the longest time. So we kind of do it backwards here yeah. a little bit. And so, um, yeah, again, it was, it was new. I love the community aspect of it. We would roll up to, you know, courts in in Long Beach, courts in Hawthorne, courts in Norwalk, and we would just play and people would come out and they'd know, you know, they'd know us and we were very locked in and plugged into the community. And Mm. again, it was, it was, I came into that team. It wasn't like I fostered it, but I was a big part of it for a a long time. And and that organization was a huge part, like I said, of, you know, my would have done post, you know, college. So um yeah all of those aspects of it but i just love the people the community and and playing we'd play against freaking ballers who were eight and ballers who were like 80 you know yeah. and it kind of small side kind of levels the playing field a little yeah. bit so okay so then in with that nike um mm-hmm. what would you call it partnership event or what yeah i guess yeah. event that's how you get to play against neymar tell me like how was that experience what was yeah. That all about. Um, so after strike night, again, I just stuck with Bola and um, we did a bunch of stuff. We did different events. We partnered a lot. Um, we did stuff with like Nike Sports. We did stuff with Nike. So all this stuff, you know, the different events, we were like very plugged in. So we'd help, you know, we'd show up and be able to um, either do photo shoots with people or do different events, um, you know, that were a little bit more intimate, you know? Mm. So we had even, we did even done stuff with like um, Manchester City when they came here. We did stuff with the German national team. We did stuff I with saw, Neymar. Yeah, We've, yeah, yeah, we did, you know, yeah, we did. We were able drop, to do drop. a lot. <laughs> we need the names. I know, I know. I don't really name drop that much. You but, got, you um, got a name drop. So you can check out my, reel. you can, ch- yeah, okay. Okay, um, okay, before okay. we move on. List of names right now, of like just like whoever comes to mind. Okay, let's go top three, five. I mean, I like how, I how many we had like five. I'll say four. I met like Foden, Ederson, um, obviously Neymar. I obviously. worked with a lot of the a lot of the women um, from the U.S. national team, um, Tobin Heath, Kristen Press. They're lovely people. Um, yeah, Rudiger. Rudiger um, who else? You know, yeah, I don't know. So like, yeah. we need names out, and she forgets about. Yeah, them. no, names. honestly, I have the worst memory too. It's so, so crazy. yeah, well, how is it working with those type of people? Like, do you, um, like you Leroy see- Sané was a really fun one. Um, yeah. Like, um, so you, <laughs> okay, so you know how big these people are, right? Yeah. You when when arriving to these events or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like what's going on in your mind? Like what are you, is it nerves or do you, are you just kind of like, eh, whatever? I'm definitely not like, eh, whatever. Mm. But um, I, I don't know. I don't really get starstruck. Mm. I will a little bit more in terms of like athletes. um, But I think it's more of like an admiration for what they've done, Mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to idolizing these people because they're people, you know, they're not gods. They're not, you know, they're people and they they've done insane things don't get me wrong but um i've always kept a pretty level head when it comes to you know meeting people but Mm -hmm. yeah i mean when you're in that moment meeting them you like get you get nervous you're like oh my gosh you know like these people are huge um 
Who was the first uh, big name that you got to like work with? Was it Neymar or before? Probably would have been Neymar. Would have <laughs> been like. Started with Neymar. <laughs> <That's crazy>. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was cool. Um, I know there's definitely people that I'm forgetting about that I'm gonna like. I'm gonna like scroll through my Instagram yeah. and just be like, oh, oh, shoot. Just on the like with like Neymar, did you get to like conversate with him? Does he speak English? He speaks English. He speaks a little bit of English. Oh, okay. He likes to pretend he doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but it, it's all business for him. So that one okay. was a very much like when we were, um, I would say the group of people or like the experience that was like the most relaxed mm -hmm. that would like actually, you know, engage a lot more would have been the German national team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they I were, they were so took, sweet. Yeah. They were so sweet. So nice. Um, they, did, barely spoke English, but we had like the best time because we got to play a little bit with them and just, mm -hmm. I mean, when you have a ball at your feet, like you don't yeah. need to even speak, like you just, it's just so fun. So with Neymar, that was definitely more of like work for him. Mm -hmm. So he kind of came in, um, was there for maybe like an hour and then he like bounced. Um, but he was still super nice, took a picture with us and, um, you know, did his thing. He was super nice though. Yeah. But yeah, he didn't really speak like great English. So yeah. it's not like we're like, Hey, you know, um, but it was obviously a great experience. So, so, so a little bit around this topic. Where has um, soccer taken you? Like out out of college, out, like mm -hmm. since you graduated from college, like where has soccer taken you in terms of like different countries and stuff like that? Like, yeah, I mean, um, gosh, all over the place. But soccer for me is not just playing. Mm -hmm. It it's my whole life, but. It, very different aspects, I guess, and in different industries of sorts. Um, so soccer as a whole has taken me, you know, to, I mean, I've been all over Europe, mm. Canada, um, it's taken me to Tokyo. Um, yeah. Tokyo's sick. Yeah. I've never been, but it <laughs> looks sick. <laughs> My ugly, I've been. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what's, um, what's been your favorite uh, experience? um like traveling traveling and, experience and this was all through like um soccer events that you've been invited to um uh, a lot of it actually was for um yeah either soccer events training with teams again i was um in the process of going pro and then covid hit mm -hmm. so i don't necessarily think we'll get all into that because it's kind of a bigger story but covid was really i know for a lot of people and i want to be sensitive when i say this but COVID for me also couldn't have happened at a worse time. Yeah. Um, it really took a lot out of, you know, my sales in terms of playing, um, not even mentally, just the opportunities. They yeah. all they all dried up. I feel like it's such a common story that mm -hmm. with a lot of people that either they yeah. end up quitting because uh, once COVID hit, the opportunities yeah. were gone or they had a yeah. really good opportunity lined up and then yeah. gone. Like, Which was yeah. me. Yeah. So I was always set on me I wanted to play overseas I didn't mm -hmm. want to play in the NWSL um love the league it was more of a personal preference I love traveling I love different cultures I just wanted you know the game to take me outside of mm -hmm. outside of the country um and there was also a little bit more um a little bit more out of the country in terms of like levels you really only have the NWSL here that's pro in other countries you have different you know right leagues different yeah. levels and stuff it's like that yeah. it's more structured more opportunity, you know, I could have played in the second division if I couldn't make the first, like you don't get that here. So yeah. I had put all my eggs kind of in, in that basket. And I had already at that time traveled to Switzerland. I traveled to Spain and played. Um, and in terms of signing for a longer period of time, I was set to do so in May of 2020. Mm. Um, but as we know, everything yeah. kind of hit in March. So before that you in Switzerland, Spain, um, you were signed on teams or you I wasn't signed. I was, okay. I was in trials. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was very close to signing in Switzerland and I chose not to, um, I really loved it there, but the, I think the culture was just so mm. different. Spain, I was super bummed with because I had a great opportunity there. I trained there. I ended up injuring my knee on mm -hmm. trial there. So I was actually supposed to go back to Spain, though, in April um, and kind of have another retrial with them. 
because I'd only gotten like one or two days under my belt. Mm. Um, and then I couldn't walk. So, um, but that was a great experience. But I was supposed to go there. I was supposed to go back to Spain. Um, I was supposed to go to Italy. And then I was supposed to go to Cyprus. So I had like probably three, three different places lined up um, to go. And yeah. And COVID hit. And then COVID hit. So, so I was also prior to um, COVID as well, out, uh, outside of, um, I mean, I guess after college, I was, I was modeling and doing commercials full time. That was my mm. full time job. So that's also why I say like soccer has taken me, you know, everywhere because my, you know, I do sports and fitness. So a lot of the countries I've been to, I was actually working and shooting in. So, oh, nice. but when COVID hit, um, it completely stopped soccer. It stopped, you know, the whole industry shut down, even in terms of the entertainment industry. Yeah no modeling, no commercials, no soccer, nothing. So mm. I didn't have this whole like, oh, you can work from home thing. I just, yeah. I actually had my whole life. On pause or? Torn to pieces, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah obliterated. Yeah. So um, I don't really talk about that, you know, a whole lot. And I was talking about, you know, I was talking to a good friend the other day and we were talking about it and I kind of realized like, yeah, kind of don't didn't even really realize how much it changed my life, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's such a such an interesting time because it it, it 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 changes the dynamic of a lot of things. Even like, even like just a very small like example is just like that people not having that COVID year in high school. I mean, in college, yeah. not having that extra year to use or in experiences like, like yeah. you explained. Mm -hmm. For me, like for my story is uh, my first year of um, college, I tore my ACL going into it. So I had to redshirt mm. and then I would have played my or yeah. trained at least in my second year, but then mm -hmm. COVID hit and then I didn't have a second year. So I, my first two years of college was, were gone pretty much. And then I started my third year. So it was like, a, it's a weird little thing that, that, that happened during that time. Yeah. But, um, but once things started opening up, what did, what was, uh, what did your life look like? Well, so this would be 2021, 22? Well, my life didn't stop when COVID hit. Mm. I ended up pivoting and starting my own business. And that's when I went oh. full time into private training, nice. where I'd also do um, mentorship, advising, um, mm. game analysis. I I was booked and busy. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing, I was, yeah. And, you know, what I said is like some, I don't even realize sometimes like what I went through because my mindset is always forward. Right. So I was like, <laughs> People were like doing these like TikTok dances and all this stuff. And I'm like, I was up at like 6 a.m. like making my website. Like yeah. I was, it was kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I was able, you know, to pivot and still do stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a full-time job that was really lucrative for me during that time. And I'm very, very grateful for that because I know obviously it was a very hard time for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I was doing for, again for another two and a half, probably two and a half years during COVID and, you know, even after it. So, okay, nice. yeah. And then now, I mean, now that everything's pretty much open back up, I have like three different jobs now because I went back to doing everything. Yeah. Um, but I kind of just, I'm able to make my own hours for everything and, um, I still model, I still do commercials, I still do events, I still private train, obviously I still play. So mm -hmm. um, I also work at my church as well, which I love doing. So nice. um, kind of, you know, I still do a lot, but right. it works for me. So love it. Yeah. So for those who don't know, where do you play right now? Right now, so I'll be playing with Miss Kick again. Um, okay. We'll be in the WPSL. So I've been playing with them for like the past, this will be my third season with them. Nice. So I'm super excited. Yeah. Okay, so if anyone wants to go and watch you play, where can they see you? Um, Irvine Valley College, IBC. Um, we start season in May. So, okay. yeah, May through pretty much... Schedule's like, out already or no? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, actually it is. Yeah, yeah um, it came out. I don't know our schedule yeah, off the top of my head. But I remember seeing it on Instagram. Yeah. So it's okay. out... Um, it's actually, um, Miss Kick is like, people are like, oh, that's such an interesting name. It's actually a brand from, it's a, yeah, I guess a brand. It's the best way I can put it from UK. Mm. And um, it's this 
not a lady, I don't know, she's kind of my age, a woman. I don't know. Um, she, <laughs> yeah, she started this um, clothing brand, but they also do other stuff as well, mm -hmm. and they do events and all that stuff, and sponsor a lot of teams and stuff. Um, and it's really cool. It's just kind of creating a space for for girls in the game, and um, a lot of the clothing is like specifically for girls and for women. And you know, it's not like women trying to fit into like men's clothes or right. men's space or you know so it's kind of creating this space for girls and for women to I guess not to sound cliche but to really feel empowered and feel like we mm -hmm. have our own lane and um, she's done a great job over there and we had her um, you know sponsor our team two seasons ago and and last season looked a little different we were under a different organization um, but we're back with with Grace and Miss Kick again and my my really good friend um, Madison Beckley has done a lot for for the team already, um, for for the brand, and we're just we're super excited. It definitely this this time around, and maybe it's also my age too and my experience, but it definitely feels more. Um, it feels like it's going to be more than just a soccer season. Yeah. So, super excited. We're going to have a lot of teams out and coming and watching and supporting, and um, you know, hopefully we get the community out there and support. You yeah. know what what we've kind of been doing the past couple of years. So we're we're super excited. We got to get the team to go and watch. Yeah. No what. Yeah, for sure. All right. That'll be good. Um, well, I feel like we, we weren't able to dive too deep into the the app post-college, but I feel uh -huh. like you have such an interesting story. We might yeah. have to have you back for another for part, part two. Part two. Yeah. yeah. You know what I actually want to do at the Street Soccer Tournament is have like a live podcast. So yeah. So if you're there, maybe yes. just have you hop on and then yes. we'll go through your story a little bit more. For sure. I'll be there. Um, do you have any final questions? No. Same, same thoughts as you two yeah. guys. Like, your story is crazy. Right, yeah. yeah. My story is pretty, it's very like unorthodox, unconventional. It's cool though. I, I think having a unique story is a, yeah. it's a better one. But yeah. I still, regardless, and I find this with a, hearing other people's stories, there's still some relatable aspects to things. So I'm sure that a lot of uh, the audience is going to be able to relate to um, some of your experiences. Yeah. Um, I'll leave it off with if you have any any anything else you would like to share or any piece of advice. I don't know. Up to um, you. you know, obviously, a lot of these questions and what I can reflect back on it is my story. And I think for a long time, I was really embarrassed of of it, and mm -hmm. I was really kind of like almost ashamed of it, you mm -hmm. know, in a way. And because it it didn't match a lot of my friends' stories, you know, it didn't match, you know, the people playing pro or, yeah. you know, where they're staying at one college for four years and they're doing X, Y, and Z. And it was so different. And also at the time, really social media wasn't a big thing either. So there was no exposure to anyone else's stories. I really, I yeah. really felt like, um, and so I said, it, you know, um, prior, but I've grown to really love my story. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that has made me a really good, not just like coach, and trainer, but like a really good encourager that mm -hmm. everyone has, you know, I know it sounds so cliche, but like everybody has their own path. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not a one size fits all situation. People also peak at different times. Yeah. I think um, my favorite piece of advice that I actually gave myself and now I give to my athletes is like, I wasn't born, you know, maybe the most talented player, or the most athletic or whatever, but I'll look people dead in the eyes and be like, I'm going to outlast you. Mm. And um, yeah, that's what I did. No, that's So that's my, that's my encouragement to, you know, my athletes now to anyone watching this is like, you got to just outlast it. You got to play your own game within the game. Right. You got to know that you're, you're built different than maybe other people are and that you have your own strengths, your own weaknesses. Um, but you got to do what you got to do to outlast people. And if that's peaking late or if that's, you know, taking a season off or whatever it may be to get where you want to go, like there's there's plenty of opportunity for anyone who wants to do what they want to do to pursue their dreams. So I'm that's just perfect. a small little story within that. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. I think that's a great way to end the pod. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming yeah. on the podcast and sharing your story. I yeah. really appreciate it. Thanks for and having again, me. we need a part two. Yeah. We do um, need a part two. We'll do that. Wow. Um, all right, guys. I always forget to do this. I have to do this in the <laughs> very <laughs> start. Uh, Yuli, do some editing or something. But guys, please like, 
subscribe, comment, because we don't get enough of it. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, please. please. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching another episode. Um, you know, if you want to follow, where do they follow you on Instagram? Um, yeah, just Hayes Gonza. It's kind of an interesting one, but Hayes, Hayes Gonza, H-A-Y-S-G-O-N-Z-A. It'll, it'll be in the description. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at without a doubt underscore athletics. Rafael Espinoza.x. Underscore Gutierrez, Sergio. You don't follow him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. <laughs>